actually have wow. a question because uh, the video, the oh, video that is coming up at four o'clock uh, over on my oh, channel, gosh, uh, shameless know. plug. There you go. Um, is <laughs> is about is about <laughs> Stu, but it's not not him returning in the sense of like a character because I don't think he's going to come back as a character. Like I said, I could see him coming back as like you know a nightmare scene or a flashback or whatever the case may be, but. What do you guys think? And we can start with Knight and just go around, uh, you know, or Jake, let's do that because I'll, I'll have my answer last. So Jake and then, but yeah, anyway, the question is, um, could you see Stu coming back in a similar manner to Billy as a hallucination? And the reason I, and one of the, like, the things that I stay in the video is that if Leslie Mocker is like, let's say, they go the meta route and it is Scream 2 all over again. And Leslie Mocker is the Mrs. Loomis type character. Do you think that that could be a way that they incorporate Stu is as like a hallucination? Cause who would know her better, know him better than her sister? You know, it's one of those things. Do you think that that could be a possibility? Uh, Jake. Oh my God. If they make Stu's mom a killer, I'm walking out of the theater. Hell no. No way. I'm, dude, I am so <laughs> against that. I'm sorry, but. No, no, no Leslie Mocker is his sister. Oh, you're Vince's right, you're right, mom. you're right. Oh, yes, my bad, mom. yeah. Yeah, Vince's mom. Right, 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 right. Because it's, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I would be against that. Because, dude, we've seen that. We've seen it. First of all, we've seen that before in the past. And I'm just not a big Debbie Loomis mm -hmm. fan. Like, I'm just, I think she is so over the top and so silly. And her motive is just so out there. It, it feels like something that they kind of, like, came up last minute with in the in the writing room. And I believe I've even read that they had a different ending with different killers, but someone, it got leaked online or something. Right. And they were like, oh, no, we got to change it last minute. So they made it something else. But, uh, dude, I don't know. I've just, I've never liked the ending to Scream 2. It's it's always been a bit of a, it's always been like so out there to me, especially with how the characters are portrayed. I love Mickey, too. Mickey is yeah. this serial killer who just decides to be a ghost face because Mrs. Loomis wants him on board. That is such a cool concept. And the guy disappears halfway through the movie. What? Like, I want to see right. more of that. I want to see more of Derek was supposed to be a killer. Yeah, right. yeah. See, Derek and, and Haley. And, uh, Derek and Haley were Haley. supposed to be the yeah. two killers. And, with now, I would have had a problem mm -hmm. with that, too, because, like, what? Everyone Sidney Prescott dates is the killer now? You know, give us something Give us something different. Exactly. Like, this, the killers in the second one are yep. too... It's too too close to the killers from the last one, literally being the mother of, of the, the killer from the last movie. It's just like, it's, it's a stretch to me. Uh, what I will say that I will say this though, fate uh, talking about, um, Oh, what's up, master chaos. What's going on? What's up? Um, chaos. What's happening, bro? What's up? Jose? Hey, cool cats and kittens. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's <laughs> Tiger King for reminding me of that. Um, but Faith, to answer your question though, I, I think like, I understand where you're coming from with the stew stuff. Like it is, a, it's out there. Like it is. I, in all fairness. Mm -hmm. But the only reason I'm like kind of getting on the stew train, why I'm like, I got my foot in the door right wow. now is because of all the stuff in the last movie about them kind of teasing the idea, the whole yes. Matthew Lillard, literally in every single interview he's in, when he's asked about scream, he's like, Oh, I would love to be in scream six. Like put me in that movie. And we're dealing with creatives who are massive fans of the source material. So like, it wouldn't right. shock me if they decided to bring that back. They are, they've already retconned stuff. Like there was little tiny retcons in that last movie that changed the past mo movies. So like if they decide to go that route, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I really think it's a possibility that Stu could come back like real in real life. But I also see that what the point you're trying to make as well, that he could come back as a, as a force ghost, <laughs> just like Billy in a potential <laughs> new killer that's related to him. I see that too. I just really hope they don't go at that angle. I, I would not. I would not be into that personally. What about you, Knight? Mm -mm -mm. Well, I think, I think anything is possible because obviously we we've seen what happened with Billy. But I so agree. I do not want to see him as a hallucination. Think that if if they were to do that, it's just too. It's ridiculous. I, I'd be I'd be totally upset if if they did that. I think they should, if he, if he comes back, which I think is a strong possibility, they should just bring him back and let's yes. just go. You know, let's go. That's what they yeah. should do. If if he's gonna come back, let him come back. Because the other thing of it too is that, I mean, what is it like? Okay, so you know, Billy is an hallucination, so now we're gonna have Stu as an hallucination. I just think that it would be so unoriginal, and I think that these guys, if anything, they want us carving some new ground you know no pun intended when i said carving by the way 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Craven. Yeah, what man. No, that? I. Yeah, I mean, if I'm with Knight, I think I think that if it's either you you bring him back or you don't. It's it's one or the other. I I don't. Mm-hmm. You know, Billy had to come back that way because he took a bullet to the head. We know he's dead. There's no there's nothing there was debate or anything else. And so he had to come back the way he did. Makes sense. But for Stu, no, I think that I think there is. I'm telling you, I, I agree with Jake. I think there, there's so much stuff in five. I made a whole video outlining a few things already that just kind of point us gently in the direction. They weren't, they're knocking us over the head with it. Very subtly pointing us here. I really believe that. And I think that this is a real possibility as well, that he will come back as a real character. And his sister being involved, interesting, right? Because his nephew's dead. And so it just goes to show that, you know, even though you try to tame two wild lions, you're not going to be able to keep him under control. And they killed his nephew. That wasn't ordered by Stu. Um, that was a, that was a collateral damage kill. And again, you got two crazy, you got two psychopathic mm-hmm. people. You're trying to control them. They're going to get out of bounds a little bit sometimes. So that was an accidental kill. That was not, right. not accidental, but that was incidental. That was not supposed to happen. So now you got his his sister, like you said earlier. Vince's mom is in the picture. You know, she's going to be hyper revenge minded. And you know, I don't know. I don't feel as strongly about the sister Jake as you. I don't mind it. If she's incorporated, I, I mean, just personally, I, I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing Stu and Leslie killing together in some capacity. I mean, I think more about that. I, I, I haven't really fleshed it out, but I'm open to it. But my idea is this. If you're going to bring Stu back, let's go. Just get on the train, load up, bring him back, and let's see it happen. That's all. Let's just make it happen. And I don't think it is out of the realm of possibility. And I think that it's, it's very plausible that it could happen. So, I mean, Stu train tickets mm-hmm. are for sale. Let's go. My my only thing right. my only thing like right. with the whole I pro like I don't I don't mind the good old fashioned revenge mm-hmm. as far as a motive goes. I know it's a typical like, you know, horror movie trope, things like that, but here's the thing. Like one, it's easily related to from an audience perspective. It always works, it always hits home, it makes sense, and it's you know, it's believable, like I said. And and the problem is that yeah. I personally really enjoyed the motive of Scream Five. But a lot of people really did it because it was so far fetched and it wasn't easily connected. You know, it's a motive that you could honestly just completely get lost in and doesn't really make sense unless you're really following along and and see what the tone in which they're trying to establish. And then you get to that motive scene and it's like, oh, that makes sense. My problem with Scream 6 is that like motive is going to be a big thing, but how creative can they really be in motive? And what we saw with Scream 5 was, in many ways, a carbon copy of 96. Like, very reminiscent scenes, very, you know, yeah, they might have had slight variations, but they were nearly identical, you know. And so I could see them continuing that meta route and giving you a Scream, you know, 2, 2.0, and kind of, you know, very mm-hmm. reminiscent of Scream 2. You have that, you have the original motive, but it's also Stu's sister because I don't think that they threw that in there just to brush it over. I still think Vince, Vince had to have, has to have some significance because the way that they marketed him and built him up and how he had more scenes and stuff like that. And they cut him out to just what he got. And I could be completely wrong, but Based on him being established as a mocker, him being established as, you know, the the nephew of Stu, because now Stu has a sister, which didn't happen until this point, all that stuff. I think Vince was the framework for an establishment of a mocker's returning, not Stu, uh, personally, like I said, not Stu, but Leslie Mocker, because they, because well, you don't just throw that out there in passing. It was a real quick, like, you I know, agree. if you blinked, if you went and took a piss, if you did anything, you missed that moment entirely. It was so fast. It was just Dewey mentioning it in passing. Yeah. And so I don't think you do that unless there's a reason. And you don't market Vince the way that they marketed him to just kill him off in 10 minutes. Like, it just it didn't make any sense. So I just think that it's very likely that they go that route. And now you have a sort of mix between – because you could argue Scream 5 was a mix between – you know, several motives throughout the Scream franchise, right? I mean, it was very reminiscent to Scream 4. So, like, 
they could do like with Leslie Mocker and the good old fashioned revenge, you essentially have Scream three and two combined. Just like, you know, the other Scream was ninety six and four combined. So now you fill in the gap with the other two, it's very meta. Instead of Roman, it's Leslie. And, you know, obviously there'll probably be another accomplice or two, whatever the case may be. Um, but it's a direct tie in to Scream Five, which I think they're going to do. I think there's going to be some connection. Um, and I think that that's something that whether they go that route or not, I think it's an easy route to go. And it's just and I just think of the revenge route as just, again, like it's a motive that you can't can't really go wrong with. Like, yeah, it's old. But again, it's like what other motive are they going to do that's so creative that one is going to hit with audiences like general audiences, not just like, you know, diehards like us or people that grasp the entire thing like or, or and also in the same breath, what's going to be something that isn't going to just piss people off and make sense to the overall story. And I just think instead of trying to be so creative that you run the risk of losing your audience or just having backlash, if you just keep it simple, you keep it the good old-fashioned revenge, you can tell a story around that, you can have other random motives, kind of like how Mickey had just like some stupid far-out motive, but it just went into his psycho- you know, his, his psyche, which is just, he was just crazy. His motive made no sense. Even Mrs. Loomis says, like, do you believe that? Like, did you hear that nonsense? Like, it's the whole thing, and I just think that that's kind of, personally, I think that that's probably the route that they should go because then you you establish yourself. Because this is that this is going to be that stopgap film that decides if it's going to be a trilogy or not. And I think that I'm all for them taking some risks, taking some chances, being creative in some areas. But I think that this film really needs to hit home because this is honestly the first film that'll be solely radio silence, right? You know, because they because they didn't have to have tie-ins and all that other stuff. So I just think like Scream Six. Right. I think you should just get back to simplicity, get back to something that everyone can relate to and connect to, and then just tell your story the way you want to tell it, execute it properly. And now you you set yourself up for it to be a trilogy or beyond, you know? You can have several films. I just I just think that that's that it just makes the most sense and there has to be something with Leslie Mock. I just I just don't see them doing that and then just not mentioning her you know i mean yeah it just like they 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 really established a lot of characters that weren't on screen i mean you could argue christina carpenter is was the most important character in that entire movie and she wasn't even in it Mm -hmm. i mean the whole establishment was based on like everything centered around her essentially and she wasn't even a character in the film like, so they definitely got to establish her in Scream 6. And I just think Leslie, and and this is something I've mentioned in the last couple videos. How cool would it be to get a Mocker Loomis showdown, you know, in modern time? Like that bloodline coming to, coming to a head. You have, you know, other. Sam Carpenter face-to-face with, you know, Leslie Mocker, and you have that showdown. I think that that would be really, I think it'd be a cool thing to see. But, yeah. I, I, I envision the the... I, I like a lot of what you said, Fate. And I think, it, it, but my thought is, imagine like because was it Christina Carpenter, right? Yeah, their mom. She obviously she goes back to Scream One. We have another connection to '96 now because because you know she was with Billy. But what if? And and again, I know I know Fate, and and I respect everything you said. I do, and I know you and I have just different views on Stu, and I'm a, and that's totally fine. I love I love the the rabbit trails we can go down. But yeah. in in my view of it, because I think Stu is a, still alive and he's going to come back, I'm just, as you were talking, I was thinking about how you could do all kinds of things with motive. And you talked about revenge. And, and instead of it being so much for me about, about Vince, but that is a, a big deal because he was killed and that's his nephew in the whole nine yards. But I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, what if, because there's a good chance if Billy knew Christina, obviously he did, he slept with her, and she conceived Sam, Billy and Stu were inseparable. These guys were like on each other. I, I highly doubt that he didn't know Christina. So Stu probably already knew Christina as well. What if he had an attraction to Christina and she rejected him and she went with Billy and he's, and he's resented her since that oh. day. Well, then she has a, ch- and then she has a child that's by Billy. So now it's like Billy's getting him again. That's, 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 
a child now that's another Loomis. Of, and I'm just thinking, I literally was thinking this as we were talking. You could go with all kinds of motive there of why Stu is coming back to it. And then you have a you have a, a showdown between Sam and Stu. You know, the, lad, the last lineage of bloodline of, of directly from Billy against Stu. You know, I mean, I'm just fleshing this out as we're talking, but I think there's a lot of good revenge motives. That's what I'm saying. I think that that's, and of course, killing Sydney's revenge. I mean, he wants to kill Sydney. I mean, he could finish the job. He, you know, I think yeah. he possibly killed Dewey in Scream 5. I think he probably killed Dewey in, in the hospital. I still think there's a very good chance that was Stu. And if that is the case, mm -hmm. and we find that out later, then he still has work to do because Sydney's still there. And guess what? She's negotiating right now to come back, waiting for a script. So if she comes back, then there's always more motive for Stu. So just ideas I'm throwing out there. And I another think Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that I had ahead, a problem Jake. with with Stu was it would make the whole movie about Sydney again. And we've exactly. Seen I was just going to say four different movies now where there was someone trying to kill Sydney Prescott, and it's like, dude, how many people want to kill Sydney Prescott? Oh my God, can we can we move on from that? Right. And tell a right. new story, you know. And that's that's the one other thing I'm worried about if they bring back Stu. Is it going to be all about killing Sydney again? Or I don't think so. They, yeah. I was just going to say, they could go the route where it's like maybe Stu has had a change of heart and wants to kill Billy's bloodline. Like, he's still right. murderous exactly. and vicious, but he just wants to end the Loomis bloodline. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes. I mean, yes. you could yeah, go that yeah, route. Yeah, a different too. motive. So, that, you, that, would be, that would be much better if they did that. I think yeah. that's what I'm leaning I mean, towards. Jake, that. Jake almost said essentially what I was going to say. The only, the only difference that the, the problem is, is that let's say I, I don't want to see them go backwards. Like, right. I don't want to go backwards. We're already heading yep. in a forward direction. Let's head that forward direction. The problem is, is that, yes, Stu returning and being a character that, you know, is going after the Loomis bloodline or whatever the case may be, especially if Christina Carpenter is established, you have you have entry points to kind of incorporate Stu. Right. But as much as people love seeing Stu back, I think a lot – of people, if not the majority. Oh, I turned him off. I had enough. I was like, wait oh, a minute. No. <laughs> I had enough. Yeah, I you... turned him off. Try again. Come on, Fate. Fate you, got you decided. On us. <laughs> he did. I think Stu decided he'd heard enough. Right? No. I don't know. Oh, oh there it is. First. Yeah. There yeah, we go. Maybe my cords. You're good. <laughs> um, but I was saying is that I think most people, if not a majority of people, will be disappointed if if you don't get that. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, true facts. Uh, but I think many people will be disappointed <laughs> if, you, wrong way. <laughs> if you don't get that, that <laughs> Sydney <laughs> Stu show. I, I don't know which way to point. <laughs> just point each of us will point in a different direction. Just like wherever <laughs> it is. <laughs> Each of us point in a different direction. But no, <laughs> Next day, I, just I, I do. I, go yeah, 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 just, <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think that that's, that's something we got to keep in mind as well, is that, you know, if Stu returns. I agree. People aren't going to be satisfied if Stu just returns just for the sake of returning. People want to see that Sydney Stu right. showdown. The problem is, is then, like mm -hmm. Jake said, you're kind of going backwards. And, like, how do you have that buildup and then have the Stu Sydney showdown at the end like, I feel like that has to be its own thing. Like, you might as well just make an entire movie about that. But then, like I said, you're going back. I just, that's my biggest problem with bringing Stu back as an actual character. Like, whether you're right or not, Craven, my yeah. problem is that if you do that, you're now going backwards. Because Stu is going to be so significant. So many people are going to are going to be excited that he's back. And you're, you're going to have to incorporate Sydney in such a huge manner. That... Now we're just yeah. it, it. Let's then it might as well just be a Sydney movie all over again. Why did you even establish Sam, Tara, you know, Mindy, and Chad? Like, why did you grow them to just go backwards to making it a Sydney story again? Because there's no way you can bring Stu back, and people are going to be satisfied not having Sydney go head to head with Stu. Like that's what sure. people want to see. Yeah, and I just I just think I just don't see it possible to get. Either or, you have yeah. to either just make this about Sydney, but then it's just like it's like to me that's like what's what's there's no point. Like now you're just making you might as well just you might as well not even have started this trilogy. You might as well just 
you might as well just made a new Sydney story, continued Scream 4, found a way to incorporate. You get what I'm saying? Like, it just, it becomes nonsense. And that's my well, biggest problem. Well, well, I don't know. Go ahead, Knight. I, well, I got a lot to well, say well, about that. Well, go ahead. Well, here's the thing to me, and, and Lucka was also saying, weren't we already going backwards, having the OG and the to, uh, connections in Scream 5? But here's the thing about it. First of all, we had things that were out of our hands, namely the passing of Wes, and you have this super popular legacy franchise that is dominated by that OG3. You have this time in between that and five. So the only way that you're going to bring the fans back is you're going to have the OG3 in it, right? But you also understand that it's time to try to move forward some, you know, or at the same time. So I think they I think they understand it. I think that's what they were trying to do. It's it's a very tricky situation. It's a gray area. And I think they tried to do that in Scream I thought they five. did an excellent and, and I think job were, though in Scream Five. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought did, they were I very do. successful. Like, because with it, but the, here but the OG three weren't the main focus. Like this and, and right, we've slowly right. seen, especially Sydney, as time has gone on, each movie has gotten less and less about Sydney. You know, and, and so right, now right. Scream Five not just that, but Scream Five, one killed one of them. Uh, two, yes. it it gave Sydney a proper happy ending to where you don't have to bring her back at all now. You could just she could go right. be a mom, go be go be a wife. You could even just have a nice little scene, uh, you know, where Sydney is maybe playing with her kids, and you got like you know if you could get Patrick Dempsey back, you know, a brief moment just, you know, talking or whatever. I think that that would be a very powerful and proper send off. Just have her in it. Like, right. And, and to Blanca's point where he said, didn't we kind of already go back? I disagree. I think scream five is the first movie that really established moving on. None of the other movies have really established moving on. You know, I mean, you could argue scream three Sydney right. had a happy end, but then scream four just completely abolished that. And, Whatever the end result would have been with Wes Craven and his trilogy of four through six, we'll never know. But I think Scream 5, right. you had to, because of the way Scream 4 ended, you had to sort of wrap that up with the OG3. So I think that now they've established Dewey's dead, Gail's back to yeah. 96 Gail, where she's all alone, top of her game, she's got her own show, she's probably cutthroat, things like that. You could bring her back easily if you want because Gail doesn't need a reason to come back to find Ghostface. She just always shows up because she wants the story. So you could br easily bring Gail back if you want or not. And I don't think you're moving backwards in that regard. And then Sydney, you finally established her happy ending. The only reason she returned was because Dewey died. I mean, she said point blank, I have no plans of ever stepping back into Woodsboro. She wanted nothing to do with, uh, you know, with Ghostface or anything. It was just until Dewey died, she was like, I have to do this for Dewey. So, like, obviously, if Nev wants to be involved, she's going to be involved. But, like, how do you, <laughs> how do you do, how do you do more? You know, like, how do you, I just, I just don't see it going backwards. I see it only going forward. And this is the first film that established that to move forward. I just think that that's that's what they did, right? But they're in. But they're in, see. This is the thing to me is. I mean, obviously, we know Nev is going to going to be in this movie. So, you know, these franchises are in sticky situations because of these legacy actors and actresses who've defined these movies, and you have such a huge fan base for them as well. So, I totally can see them trying to how weave Sydney into this story just like they did in five, maybe to a little bit of a degree, maybe a little bit more. I don't think it'll be dominant. You know, I think, you know, it's going to be similar to what she was in five, but I think they're going to continue to do that because of the history. You know, and you, and we've seen it with Halloween. We've seen it with, you know, all these different franchises. They did it with, with sound like Sally was going to be big in TCM and she, she wasn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah, so, no yeah, but, so the, 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 right. The, but that's the question is, is how, how are they going to balance having Sydney in this next movie? You know, are they going to finally let her walk off? Yeah. Are they going to just keep weaving, weaving her into some type of thing with Sam or what, you know? I, but Knight, like, how do you, but that's the question though, is that like, how do you, I think if Nev wants to come back, she's coming back. 
But I think if Radio Silence kind of has yeah. the option, like even if Nev is on the fence, I think it's and it's I think it's in Radio Silence's best interest to say, hey, let's try a movie without you, because then you have two options: either the movie's great and you, and now you know a film could be successful without Sydney, or option two is the movie isn't great because people wanted Sydney back. And guess what? Your marketing play is now to get audiences back for Scream Seven: Sydney's return. You know, and and you're gonna have probably more people in an audience than ever just because they're going to want to see how the story is going to end. But how do you, how do you incorporate even, even more, even slightly more of a capacity than Scream 5? Let's say like, like a, let's say Scream 3, right? Cause Scream 3, she was in it about, you know, 30 minutes or so, give or take. Um, right. How do you incorporate that, but also have Stu return and not make her the focus? I just don't well, think it's possible. Let me let me ask you this. What like I kind of like the idea of Sydney kind of taking a step back for Scream Six and having yeah. a, a smaller role. But what if she's still in it, just in a in an even more reduced role that then becomes bigger in Part Seven? And what I'm talking about is like, what if she's like we show her with her kids? She's having a great time. She's not in Woodsboro, so she's not getting chased around by a ghost face killer. It's it's great. You know, it's a very peaceful yeah. scene, and everyone's really happy. It's like, oh, that's awesome. And then we show the movie. It's it's our characters going through some kind of crap with a new killer, and then Sydney hears about this, and that uh, maybe Gail Weathers. I'm sorry, but this is where this is gonna go. Gail Weathers is in some kind of hostage hostage situation. Boom! Cliffhanger ending. <laughs> and then it's Sydney getting a call about it, and then she returns to Woodsboro for part seven to, to try to save Gail or, or something like along those lines. Yeah, but so like I, I do agree that if Sydney is gonna get written in this film, it's gonna be the only way you can really get it because you can't just have Sydney in the film just for the sake of having her in the film. People want to see her be a badass. But you could set it up for the next one where it's yes. like she has a, a bigger role where this one she takes hey. kind of a step back. Because I, yeah, I agree I, that I feel like we've – it's like it's almost like if we're going to throw the legacy here. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, I do. I, I kind of want to see the new characters shine a little more. A big criticism of this new film was that we didn't get enough time to care about some of the characters who were only around for a few scenes. Like Wes, I could have used another scene with Wes, honestly. I could have used one more scene with Liv. Right. Both those characters, I would like to get to know them a little more. And we didn't really get that. And if they ended up being the killers, different story, but they didn't. So I would like to see new characters really shine in this film. Clearly, all five of the screen film screen films are great at writing characters. So give us some good new characters. Screw it. And then we can have the legacy characters come back for part right. seven. Great. Yeah, that's that, that, that's now. That's can exactly. I? I just want to. I just want to. I want to cut in real quick because Jake, yeah. I, I got you. Just, so let's just take another moment. Um, to talk about oh nice what <laughs> we got going red right hand because I've got shot. the images now so there might be there might be some people that have just come into the chat I'll let you I'll let you take it for a quick minute. oh thanks man yeah so um I am making a scream fan film set in the scream universe this is going to be a scream movie from the perspective of the killers and me and my brother will be playing the two killers in the movie but just because you have the killers revealed to you in the first act does not mean that there is not more to this story. This is me and the lead actress, Maya, here. We are uh, tied up. Ghostface is keeping us captive. He's letting me do this live stream, but then I'm going back in the cage after this, uh, unless we get our, our goal of 5,000 on the Kickstarter. Uh, so make sure to su support that if you can. Uh, there will be a link in the description when this uh, live stream is over. So, like, on the replay, you'll be able to check it out. Uh, just, you know, support the movie. It's going to be really cool. It's from the killer's perspective. But there's still a big mystery to be had. There's still something going on that's very mysterious here that the killers can't quite figure out. So, uh, I'm excited for you all to see it. And I hope it gets backed in 30 days or we get no money. So, please help us. <laughs> I am, I am, I am yes, supremely confident that it will happen it will i'm gonna, gonna just throw that out there that positive light will thank we're gonna, you we're gonna make this thing happen everyone everyone that's hanging out with us on friday mondays and also uh, supporters of our channels individually we just got to come together for for jake you know this is what it's yeah. all about yeah that's this right is what it's all about all of and the I lethal collective image, members yeah, do yeah. have a have a role in this. I don't know if I've even talked to you guys about it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> y'all are gonna be in it. So <laughs> hey, we're talking about it now. <laughs> we're talking about it now. Yeah. Spoilers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, spo spoilers. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you guys will be, be the ones that'll know the spoilers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. No. Yeah. No. But you do. You gotta. You gotta go. 
go show Jake some love. Like like Craven was saying earlier, a dollar, five dollars, yeah. whatever you can do, it all adds anything. up. Anything, you know, anything is better up. than nothing. Yep, um, that's right. You know, anything, uh, man. Anything. Yeah. So we would, we'd appreciate. it. <laughs> There's but, a um, hospital underwater. <laughs> that's what the whole movie's about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't you know that? Yeah. What? Just spoil it. What are, What are your words? I, you know, all of us have given our thoughts. Oh, I need to hear Craven. Hear Craven's thoughts on everything Bro, it's, we it's about. been so long. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. I kind of, I kind of, I've completely zoned <laughs> out. Underwater <laughs> hospitals. Oh, that's right. Underwater, <laughs> hospitals, underwater hospitals. Underwater hospitals. Yeah. Um, so, gosh, I was about to fall asleep. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm loving it. But um, no, I'm te- teasing. <gasps> oh. So, um, no, I, 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 I uh. Wow, I'm literally, literally I'm trying to remember everything. So we were talking about the legacy characters in Scream. And Scream, yeah, okay, like thank Sydney you. Returning. Oh yeah, yeah. Sydney's, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sydney's gonna return. I'm one of the, I'm one of the seemingly few, growing few that actually like her to continue in the franchise. I, 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 I everyone it seems to be, and I see this a lot, not just like you know in our chat, but it's a lot. People seem to be such a rush to get rid of Sydney Prescott. It's over. Her story's done. It's over. I'm like, bro, if you I, look, I'm not saying that. That that necessarily is wrong or anything like that. Just my opinion. I I'm, I'm the other side of the coin. I think that yeah, Sydney could be a part of this franchise in a real way. It's as if is it, we're acting as if there's no one that is in the writing room that has an imagination who can be creative, who can write good stories. There, I believe in people. I still mm. believe in these writers. I think that you can make a good story. It can be organic. And people say they don't want it to be forced. You're just shoving her in. No, no. you're only shoving her in if you know if your writing's poor. If you're writing as well, it's not shoved in. It's very natural. It doesn't take away from the story. It adds to it to me. It's 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 I'm like, you know, Sam. Okay, Sam is whether or not she's the final girl. I still think she's. I think she's a could be a, a whole total red herring. I think Tara could end up being the final girl after six is done. We'll see. But either way, if if it's Tara or it's Sam, okay, that's your main character, and that doesn't have to change, right? I mean, and it could be another situation where you don't have to have Sydney in from the scene one and. And everything and featured the whole thing. You can have her come in later in the movie like you did this time again. Yeah, Dewey's gone, but you still have other reasons. And I'll tell you another reason why. And again, I'm you know, I'm speaking in terms of my theories. You gotta understand, I'm I'm talking through a lens of how I I'm seeing things. So that's how I'm gonna address it. Um, you know, with with Stu, you're like, you know, how do we how does it not become a Sydney movie if Stu's there? And I really believe that you can do this in a way where that's the reason Sydney does return. So this story, because because Sam is under attack, Sam is under attack, and coincidentally, so is Tara. And the, as the movie progresses, and at some point in this film, right? I'm saying if they want to do the reveal now, I'm a big I'm a big advocate of saying if Stu's coming back, you reveal him in seven. If that's the total end game, if they're playing the long game, I should say. But let's just say they're not. They're going to do it in six. So. You know that's one big reason for Sydney to return. But you, and for, and, and in fact, you mentioned the showdown. It would come down to, yeah, it would be. But I don't think that. I think Sydney's there, but I think it's Sam that kills Sydney. I mean, excuse me, Sydney, not Sydney. Can't yeah, Sam that kills Stu in this scenario? So I, I would almost see it like you could almost have a real. You want a real passing of the baton? Think about this. We're at the very final finale of the movie. Stu has been revealed. Sydney's there. Stamp Sam's there. Whoever else, and and Sydney's you know about to kill him or about to you know to take him down or and somehow Sam steps in and, and grabs the gun or grabs the knife and says, "No, I'll do it." And she literally passes the knife. Talk about meta. Talk about metaphorically passes the knife to Sam or whatever the weapon is, if it's a gun, a gun or whatever, and Sam. Or Tara, whoever the final girl is, kills Stu. So it literally takes it from Sydney, like taking it over. I'm finishing what was started in '96 officially now. I'm decapitating him. I'm shredding him. I'm, I'm cutting him in half. There's no way he's going to ever be questioned about a return. This is done finally. And then, and then she now holds the mantle that's been trying to be transitioned, as everyone's saying, with five. You follow me? And it happens. Now, mm-hmm. will it be distracting? Again, I only think it's distracting if you, if you write it in a way that it is. And, you, and it's all about timing and pacing, 
right? So Jake, I, I know I you're itching, but I disagree. I just had the okay. funniest thought. I'm sorry. What? Would yeah. it be hilarious if Stu comes back in seven and then like we're in a Best Buy for some reason and like Sam is just knocking all the TVs on top of his head and he's just taking it like a champ? <laughs> yes. Oh, she's awesome. like, oh, just busting <laughs> yeah. the TVs. TV, he's like, like them off. Yeah. this is get nothing compared to those '90s yeah, TVs. Yeah, those '90s Let's go. TVs yeah. that were sixty pounds. Come on, baby. Get it up. Get it up. <laughs> 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 I mean, look, and again, and, and fate, you and I will probably, we will probably will disagree and disagree on it, and that's fine. I just, that's just how I really feel about it. I think no, that no, no. it could be I, done. I, I know, and, and, and like, not to, not to argue your points directly, I, but my thing is just like, one, in order for that situation to happen, you'd essentially have to have an early reveal, right, of Stu, which I think takes away from that whole suspense and buildup, because. If Sydney was to return for Stu, that means they would have to establish early on that it's Stu. But I think if you're going to, yeah, because because then then it makes no sense until Stu is revealed that Sydney returned. Like if if Sydney's returning because of Stu, like I think the value in bringing Stu back is mm -hmm. for that in reveal result. Mm -hmm. But no matter what the story is, you can't say Stu wouldn't be a distraction. You can't say Stu being revealed would it would absolutely be a distraction. Not in the third act, man. Because so you're t so, okay. Let me put it like this: so that entire movie plays out. Right. Stu gets revealed. You telling me you're not jumping up and down and screaming and going, "Yes, Stu's back!" Yes, you tell or you're telling me you're going to sit there quietly, like. Well, see, here's the thing. I think it's a difference of lenses because you're viewing it as a distraction. See, I don't. I view it totally differently. I view it as an addition. Because I think what, what's going to happen is... Especially it can be if, both, though. Well, I mean, maybe. You can have, both can be correct. They both can be correct. You're right. So, And I think that's what would be. For some, like, that, that share your view. Now you're not alone in that. They would feel that way. Those that share the view I have, there's a lot of them, too. They would feel more of this one. And then there'll be some in the middle. That's like, yeah, you know, whatever. But my thought is, if, if you write it in such a way that all, uh, all of the arrows, I guess, are pointing towards Leslie as the as the mastermind here is all coming down to the end. We're down to just a few people and you find out and they could have a scene where and we're, we're like right at the third act. We are like right there getting there at the very, very late three quarters in and there and Sydney says, find something or, or, or Sam finds something and says, you know, Oh my gosh, this is, this isn't from Leslie mocker. And then you're like, Oh my gosh, this is like, this is, this is from a mocker, but this isn't from Leslie. Which like, well, who else could it be from? Dude, okay, right in that moment, that in, that that suspense is going to level ten because they're and they, but they don't show it right away. They're just like, who could it be? And then they cut to another scene as they're getting towards that point of the reveal. And so at the finale, you reveal him then after thinking the whole movie it was it was Leslie in his scenario, right? Or someone else. It doesn't have to be. I'm just saying, if we get the mocker theme, we think it's Leslie, and we find out she's the red herring at the end of the day. Maybe she's not even involved with Stu. You know, either way, and it actually here's Stu now revealed in the third act. And I love that crazy bread, Carrie. That's awesome. So, um, yeah. So, some people will say what we're talking about now is crazy bread. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. So, anyway, so 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 that's the way I see it. So, so I think fate. You're right. No matter what, if he comes back, some people will say it was a distraction. It took away. I, I think that will be the case. Mm -hmm. But I think there's going to be a lot of people that also are going to celebrate and see, like, you know what? They pulled it off. I've always said this, though, and I'm the I'm the conductor of the Stu train. You all know that. I talk about it on my channel every live stream. But here's the thing. I even have said since day one, work, right? Oh, my gosh. For it to work. You're having all kinds of technical Dude, there's like today. mics getting muted here, <laughs> yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, last thing I'll say, this is the last thing I'm going to say about Stu for this stream, is that I've always said, guys, okay, that I, it's totally melting down right now. Knight's got his Knight glasses off. I mean, this is like, he's sick, just like, he got I'm sick done. of our conversation. He just I think so. the live stream. Here's the problem, though. If we start down the Stu train rail, we're gonna park it for like a half hour. It's just it's just gonna happen. It doesn't matter. Because <laughs> it's just what we do, okay? So listen, here's the last thing I'm gonna say. I have always said, last thing I'll say is that they need it has to be written well. That's what I went back to earlier. Yeah. Okay. Don't do it in a poor way. It could be done poorly. All right. I admit it could be done in a way that's this horrible. I'm saying think it through carefully. 
write it intelligently and write it in a cohesive manner and build that suspense at the right time. You can't reveal stew too early. You got to wait. It's got to be later. But you can leave breadcrumbs that lead you to think it's Stu because it's his sister. And you got these marker trails, but it's not her. It's a total switcheroo at the end. That's So I, I leave it there, everyone. That's that's where I'm going to leave it for this stream. And uh, that's my thought. So, <laughs> Crystal. I just see that. Awesome. I just see night. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just say, like, <laughs> all right, I'm over this. It's just... Hey. <laughs> no, that wasn't. That wasn't right it, man. I, I literally. I had to. I had to respond. Right. 